Welcome back to Sports For Real. This is Coach Hall. I just wanted to give a um, recap on what happened last week at the Super Bowl. I call it the Super Fallout because everybody in the world was expecting Kansas City to run off Tampa Bay. But if you listen to what the experts were saying, they kind of figured that it wasn't going to be. And I'm going to tell you why. First thing, the adjustments that were made. Tampa, when they first played Kansas City in, earlier in the season, I believe it was week 12, Tyreek Hill jumped out of the gate and had these big plays right out of, you know, it didn't take long for him to destroy what Tampa thought they were going to do against the Chiefs. But they made in-game adjustments, and they said, well, I'm going to allow that to happen to us again. And they tightened down on Hill, and they was able to get back into the game and almost steal it. Well, of course, a good coach is going to go back to those films, and he's going to see what they did to us and what we did to slow them down. In that first game, Kansas City did move the ball, but they couldn't push it across the goal line. Well, as you saw last week, same thing happened as happened the first time, except Kansas City never got off to those big plays. And I'll tell you why. What they end up doing was going to a man under two deep shell. So every time Hill got past that initial layer, those safeties rolled over to doubling, and it took away that deep threat. And being that everybody else was covered man to man, Mahomes really didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. That's the first adjustment. The second adjustment is Kansas City had lost those two linemen. Yeah, I forget which game it was, but they lost two linemen in the same game. And that came back to haunt them because what Tampa did, they used that defensive line to penetrate that weakness and eventually wore them down. And as you saw, pretty much Mahomes was running for his life and ended the game there. Now, like I said, that is really not a surprise as the way things played out because you have to know a little bit about the way NFL coaches go about making adjustments. It's not uncommon for them to go back and look at the tapes and what they did and what somebody else did to try to combat what was done to them so they can project what may happen. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. Now, give you some examples of what I'm talking about. If you go back to 2004, when Big Ben Roethlisberger first came into the league, he wasn't projected to be the starter. He was behind Maddox. Maddox got hurt in, I think, week two at Baltimore. And they had to insert the rookie in and nobody really had any confidence of what he was going to do. So when he got in there, they were able to run off 13 straight victories on the way to the AFC Championship game. But as the weeks went on, not knowing how to defend Roethlisberger early in the season began to transfer into how can we slow this guy down. So Pittsburgh became less effective as the year went on. And when they got into the championship game, all that came back to bite him when they were upset in the AFC Championship game. Now, Mahomes, his problem is, how are we going to defeat this man under two deep scheme going forward? Because as you know, if you play a traditional 3-4 where the linebackers have to cover those slots and, and, and Kelsey and, and anybody coming out the backfield, you have mismatches. Uh, Hardeman, they're just going to run right past them. So you cannot play Kansas City in a traditional defense and expect to compete. So you're going to see more and more of this man under 2D concept until Kansas City is, is able to show that they can beat it. Another example, last year, Tennessee showed you how to beat Baltimore. You can't play man-to-man -man against the Ravens unless you're going to keep Jackson in the pocket. As soon as those defenders turn their back and he gets past that line, he's gone. What you have to do is keep him in the pocket or widen out those ends to keep him from escaping up the middle. Keep him in the pocket and make him run around a little bit and trust that he will not beat you throwing. Now, what makes him dangerous, to me, is like a 50-50 passer. And what that means is he can hit you a perfect pass 50% of the time. When will that 50% occur to you or kill you? So you have to act as if he's going to throw a 50-50, one of those perfect passes every time. But Tennessee pretty much showed you how to beat the Ravens last year. And they kind of backslid off that, but when it came back to the playoffs, Buffalo did, <clears throat> did a, a similar kind of defense to slow down the Ravens. Another example is going back to Big Ben. Big Ben, being that he's been in the league for, what's it, 15, 16 years now, the kind of things that he was getting beat on or making mistakes against during the playoffs should never happen to a guy that's a veteran. It just shouldn't happen. So the same things that happened to him in his rookie year kind of came back and bit him again. So he has to find a way, if he's going to come back,
to not get beat by stuff he shouldn't shouldn't be getting beat by. Now you take a Aaron Rodgers, yes they lost, but the, the, it wasn't because he's making the wrong reads and doing the things that Roethlisberger was doing. It's just that the circumstances didn't bounce their way. They didn't play well enough to win. Tampa was in a state where they were doing everything right. And to beat Tampa, being that they were the underdog, they weren't really the underdog. They were the favorite because they were playing football the way they wanted to play without any mistakes. The Packers made a lot of mistakes and ended up costing them. Ben, if he's going to come back, he is going to have to be able to make the adjustments that he made going forward in his career. Otherwise, he might as well just sit on down and let somebody else take the reins of that team. Now, having said all that, all these teams must do something to prepare for the future. And first up is the Jaguars. The Jaguars on the clock. Yes, we know we have they have the first pick, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being on the clock for being in the city in Jacksonville. Why? Well, if you think back to the mid nine early nineties when Art Modell was trying to get Cleveland, the city of Cleveland, to do things for the team, build them a new stadium, you know, just make them feel appreciated so they would want to stay in the team, in, in the league, in that city. Well, they didn't want to do anything for Modell, so Modell got tired of it, packed up and moved to Baltimore. They became the Ravens. So now everybody's all up in the uproar, Modell this and Modell that, they took our team. Well, you you want to do nothing to help Modell out. So he packed his team up and split. Well, same kind of situation is happening in Jacksonville. They just had this project they called a Lot J. They were going to develop this little area right outside the stadium. They were going to have living areas and entertainment district and pretty much try to transform the image of the area. Well, that lost by one vote. So it seems like everything that the owner, Shah Khan, wants to do is getting shot down quite eerily similar to what Modell was doing in Cleveland. So when I say on the clock, they best to start doing something to make this guy happy or the Jaguar is going to be out of town. Well, why is that a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because Jacksonville is pretty much a cow town and considered a South Georgia area for years. It was only until the Jaguars came to town that things started to change in Jacksonville. And yes, things are in motion now, but... If the Jaguars leave, really the catalyst of every, all the change that's occurred in the last 25 years, they need to do something to try to keep the Jaguars in town. So the Jaguars are on the clock. So if they do leave, they're going to London. But Shah Khan has stadium ownership rights over in London where they have just built this stadium, you know, where the teams go to play when they go to London. He has ownership in that stadium. So Jaguars already have somewhere to go. So if they don't want to support it, if they keep losing here, and which some say they lose on purpose because they might want to move to London. Maybe so, I don't know. But if they don't make some changes and give this owner something that he can hang his hat on, don't expect the Jaguars to be there for the next seven, eight years. Seven, eight years, they'll be getting ready to get out of there, if not gone by then. So again, I'm not surprised that the Chiefs lost the Super Bowl because Tampa was the one team they didn't want to play. You want to play a team in the Super Bowl where you hadn't you hadn't seen before. They hadn't seen you on they, everybody's gonna see you on tape, but you want to play a team that hasn't seen you face to face and made in game adjustments already. If you go back to the year the Patriots were undefeated in Super Bowl forty two, when they played the Giants. The wrong team to play. First of all, the Giants had played him in preseason. They played him in the regular season. Then they had another two weeks to get ready for him for the Super Bowl. So that's at least four weeks to get ready for him. And they had the line to put the pressure on Brady. And that turned out to be the difference in the end. Were the Patriots the best team? Yes, they were. But all that extra time and preparation and extra coaching made the difference for the Giants. Same thing with the Bucks beating Kansas City. So until Mahomes and Andy Reid can beat that man under two deep coverage, and still take the top off the defense, they're going to be struggling. So Mahomes is going to be like Big Ben was years ago. He's going to have to make some adjustments. So if you like what I'm saying, drop me a comment, and I'll try to get more content as um, as the um, possibility exists. So sports for real, Coach Hall.